And there's Raul. Where'd he go? Oh. <laughs> you can only... Well, we ought to be able to have him up there. That looks more familiar. Yes. That's it. Hello. Hi, Raul. Hi, Raul. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. <laughs> oh. Taking some work to get here, but here we are. Well, the maiden voyage is always a little bit difficult. Yes. <laughs> Our maiden voyage. I realize you guys have done this before. First time. <laughs> <laughs> There's Tremaine. Hello, Tremaine. Hey, good morning. And I see we've got some students logging in and some teachers as well. Wonderful. It's a lot warmer on Shindig than it is outside. So I can control the slides from here. Um, just let me know. Next slide. Okay. No, oh, this looks like a good turnout today. Definitely. So, Tremaine, you'll be kicking us off? I am. Okay. I am. Ann and I, are, Ann and I are presenting today. Okay, perfect. It's 1129. We'll wait just a minute. It's 1130. <laughs> and we have 20 participants in our very first shindig this morning. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to... Banking Essentials Chapter 9. This is the first part of Banking Essentials, and we're super excited that you all have taken the time out of your afternoon to join us. We have Ann and Deb that are going to be presenting this morning with a wealth of information to share with you regarding Banking Essentials. Listen, I placed my email address inside of the chat box. If you look to the right-hand side of your screen, you will see Tremaine at lcmcmd.org. For Anyone that may have any questions or concerns regarding this workshop or need further assistance with anything, feel free to email me at any time at that address. Also, should you have any questions, that chat box over there is the place where you can ask your questions. Also, you can raise your hand um, on the screen. There should be a little place. I can't see it right now from what <laughs> the view I'm looking at, but you should be able to raise your hand and we'll be able to um acknowledge you and um, so that you can ask your questions of the presenters today. So I'm just going to turn it over to the presenters of the workshop. Okay, well, thank you so very much. I'm Deb. Uh, Anne is 
next to me up at the podium. Um, and today we're going to talk about banking essentials. We're going to do chapters one and two today. Next week we'll do chapter three. So we have a little bit of a split. You're going to be able to get the, uh, the presentation sent to you afterwards by the Literacy Council. So if you could give us the next slide, please. Roll. Next slide. What I'm going to talk to you to, about today is kind of the things of why you would want to bank. Questions that you would ask yourself so that you could help choose a bank and the good reasons for it. So why would you need a bank? How to choose a bank? What are the types of accounts? Can we get to the next slide, Roll? And then we're going to talk about two specific types of accounts, a checking and a savings account. And we're also going to talk a little bit more in depth about what goes into those things, checking and savings accounts. Um, I am not seeing the second slide. Is anybody else? All right. It turns out I can control it. <laughs> How about that? Welcome to Shindig, everybody. We haven't done this before, so be patient with us. So um, so these are the things that I was just talking to you about is the questions that you would need to ask yourself. And then we're going to go into more detail about checking accounts and savings accounts, which are the two primary types of accounts we want to talk about. There are others, but we're not going to talk about that much. And we're going to talk about using your checking account, what you can use it for, how to do it, and how to do all of the other banking options and paying for items. And then next week, next Wednesday at this very same time, we're going to talk about how do you go to the bank and open account, and then how do you manage it, and how do you make sure that what you think is in your account is the same thing that the bank thinks in your account, and that's what we call reconciling your account. And then we'll talk a little bit about setting goals and how those goals tie into what we're going to do on banking. So moving along. So this is, um, this is those questions that I just said. Why do you need a bank account? How to choose a bank account? What are the types of accounts? What are checking accounts? And what's a savings account? And with that and those big questions, I'm going to turn you over to Anne. So, Deb, I've just got to let you know that my slides are not moving along the screen. Anybody else? I'm still on this first. It doesn't matter because I have the presentation, but I don't know what everybody else's is doing. Mine's not moved. Okay, because I, I actually clicked mine on my, uh, my shindig. Okay, so yeah, so everybody has to click on the little thing at the bottom. Everybody has to click on their own? That doesn't even make sense. No, it moves. I should be able to navigate the the presentation. We apologize um, to all the participants. This is our very first session using uh, this platform. Um, so the admin would have to navigate the slides because each one of us on the podium could manipulate it, but our viewers may not see what we see. So, Roll, if you're the admin, you have to do it then, I guess. Can everybody see my the, the slides I'm sharing on the screen? I don't think so. Hmm. Jermaine? Sharing. Uh, you're muted. Uh, slide six. No. Uh, mm -mm -mm. No. So, and we're up to. We're we should be four. asking to. We're. We should be up to four right now. Yeah, we should be on four. Okay, and and. Uh, that yeah. Yeah. So everybody can Wait, control something. their own slides, yeah. but yeah. but. but uh, 
we may have to just follow if you all can just say the page. Okay, um, so, so participants saying that they could manipulate the slides as well. Okay. okay, so let's go to slide four. Okay. Everybody go to slide four. Which is called questions to ask yourself. Mm -hmm. All right, shall I take it from here then, Deb? Yes, please. Okay, so I'm so sorry about that, but um, we hope you're following along. Uh, here are a few questions to ask yourself when you're considering opening a bank account. So is my money safe at my house or wherever I'm keeping it, right? Not, not the best place to keep very much money. You can certainly keep a few dollars at home, but you wouldn't really want to have a lot of money lying around. Do you want to be carrying a lot of cash around with you? Because if you don't have, you know, the ability to write a check or to um, use an app to pay people or a debit card, then you actually have to usually carry a lot of cash around with you. Okay, so you really don't want to be doing that either. Do you want to be able to pay for things online? Okay, that's a big consideration with um, shopping these days. You know, I think a lot of us do that. Do you want to be able to transfer money? For example, to send money to your family, maybe even in another country. Easiest way and cheapest way to do that is with a bank account. If you use some of the other things like, um, say, Western Union or something, that can actually cost quite a lot of money. There's a lot of fees involved. Do you want to maybe in the future get a bank loan? If you do, then it might be good to set up a credit history. And you do that by having a bank account and managing it well. And then the bank will look at your credit history, the history of your banking and say, ooh, uh, this person manages their financial matters really well. We think we could give them a loan because they seem very responsible with their money. Okay, so good way to build up credit history. And do you usually, as I just mentioned, end up paying a lot of fees to other entities or organizations like Western Union? Or even, um, you know, if you get a money order, the fee for that is not quite as bad as Western Union, I don't think, but there is nevertheless still a fee. Okay, so let's go on to the next slide. This is slide um, five. Mm -hmm. And this is why do you need a bank account? So, as I just mentioned, it's really a safe place to keep your money. It does help you to manage your money better because there are records, okay? So when you just have cash in your pocket or cash at home, you just kind of spend it. Maybe you don't really know what you spent it on. But when it's in the bank, you will usually have some kind of record of how you're paying for things, when you pay for things, how much money each thing cost, okay? Because you'll be able to see it on your bank statement. You can use it to pay bills very easily. You can also use it to save money, and we'll talk more about that later. As I just mentioned, you can build a good credit history or credit record. Um, these days, some stores, apart from small amounts of money, don't even accept cash anymore, or they're a little unwilling to accept cash. So, you know, I think the way of the future is going to be probably less cash and more electronic payments. And also, um, there are these features called ATM machines. Uh, you'll see a picture if you have this slide on your screen. And the ATM machine lets you do your banking at the machine during any hour of the day or night. So you can go to the ATM machine, which is not when the bank is necessarily open, and you can do your banking then. That's very handy for people who say work, you know, long hours and work when the bank is usually open, because you can just go to the machine and you can pay in money, you can take out money, and you can do some other things from the machine, okay? Little hint here though, um, Use your bank's ATM if at all possible, because if you use a different bank's ATM, it may charge you fees, okay? All right, so let's move on to the next slide. That will be slide six. And this one is headed up, how to choose a bank, what is important? 
So is that bank that you're going to choose convenient and close, right? You don't want to choose a bank that's far away from maybe your home or maybe where you work. Okay, so choose a bank that's going to be have a very convenient location for you. Um, maybe you really um, don't speak very good English, so maybe it would be very helpful for you to have people at that bank who speak your language. Okay, so that's maybe a thing to consider or to ask about. Um, you can ask yourself how you pay bills and how will you be able to do that from your bank account. Usually it's very easy, um, much more convenient than, you know, having to go to the post office, get a money order, that kind of thing. Do you get a paycheck from work? Now, if you do, sometimes this can be put in your hand as a check or as cash, but many companies these days offer the option of what's called direct deposit. That means it goes straight from the company into your bank account. And for one thing, it usually gets there quicker if they have to give you a check and you take that check and then you have to go somewhere and cash it, that takes longer. Okay, so getting it direct deposit or put straight from the company's bank account to your bank account can be much quicker and also, of course, much safer. Okay, so ask yourself that. Can a direct deposit be made? Always look at the fees that the bank charges. Okay, when you're thinking of opening an account, you can go in and the bank will give you a little pamphlet or brochure or a, a, a form that will show you what their fees are why they charge fees, in what circumstances they charge fees, and how much those fees are. Okay, there are a lot of fees, and we'll talk more about that um, in a little bit, but please be aware, it's very important that you know what the fees are gonna be that you might be charged. Also, as I just mentioned, the ATM or the banking machine is very, very handy. same bank and where the ATMs are that are convenient for you. And then lastly, you'll see here on the slide in big letters, as it says, I C. And this means that your bank is insured by the federal government. So usually this isn't super important, but these days it's becoming more and more important. This simply means that if your bank fails or if something happens to your bank that um, it no longer has the money that it should have, like all of the money of all the people who've put, who put money in or deposited money in the bank, So the federal government will um, So it's very important that it is FDIC insured, that you see this little sticker at the bank. And if you don't see it, ask about it, because this simply means that if the bank should fail, the federal government will make sure that you still have your money. Okay, it's kind of like an insurance policy from the federal government. So again, for most of this, this will never be an issue, but it could be, so you might as well have this feature as not have it. Okay, and if we just move to the next slide then. And let's just talk about the kinds of bank accounts. So what are the types of accounts? And Deb did already mention these a little bit. So in this presentation, we're going to talk about the two main accounts. This would be your checking account, which is your everyday account, and also your savings account, which is what it says. It's an account for you to build up some savings. There are some other accounts. Again, Deb mentioned this. We're not going to talk about these. We'll talk about these in another presentation, but not today. And some examples are what's called a money market account, which is a kind of investment account, a certificate of deposit, also known as a CD. This is um, where you put in some money and it's there for a certain amount of time. So again, kind of savings account. Or regular investments accounts. 
and that investment accounts can be of various kinds. They can be just straightforward investment accounts, or they can be retirement accounts or something called IRAs. So we will be talking more about that next week. But at the moment, just understand that there are more long-term savings accounts um, in this category. But right now, today, we're just going to be talking about the two main accounts, checking and savings. All right. So back to Deb, unless anyone has any questions before we move on. You can certainly raise your hand or put it in the chat. Otherwise, back to you, Deb. Okay, we're on slide eight now. There's a number at the very bottom of the right-hand side of the slide. So as long as you're on slide eight, you'll be following us. We're going to start with checking account. What is a checking account? So Anne just told you that it's the kind of account that you use for kind of everyday things. And it gives you a quick access to your money and what you can do with this account or you can put money in, which we call a deposit. You can take money out, which we call withdrawing money, or you can make payments. And the picture there is of a check, but we're gonna talk in a minute of the other ways that you can use this account to pay for things. So if we go to the next slide to slide nine, We can put money in, we can deposit money with a check, with cash, or with direct deposit. So if you have money in your hand, you can deposit it at your bank. If somebody else gives you a check, whether they write it for a personal account or if you're uh, someplace that you work gives you a check, you can put it in. And you can also, just as Ann just told you, a lot of employers, a lot of people who hire people, they want to do a direct deposit and it just goes from their bank to your bank. So it goes electronically. And there are other types of electronic transfers that we're gonna talk about later. Um, and those can go in as well. And then you can do things in person or you can use ATM or you can use your um, computer if you're doing electronic things. You can use pretty much the same things for taking money out. You can pay for things with cash, credit, or debit cards. Debit cards are things that are plastic cards. They look kind of like credit cards, but they're different. And the difference is that on a debit card, things go directly in and out of your bank using that debit card. A credit card, and we have a whole presentation on credit cards that's going to be coming up for two presentations, is something where it's not uh, actually connected to your bank account, and so you have to pay for that separately. So your debit card you can be used. You can do electronic transfers. You can do it in person or by ATM to take money out. And then you can also make your payments you can pay your rent or your mortgage or your electric bill or your water bill by check or debit card or electronic payments or transfer the payments online. So we're going to talk about all of those options a little bit more about using your account next week when you come in next week, Wednesday at this time. So I'd like to go to the next slide, to slide 10 now and talk to you about what a savings account is and how that's different. So I told you that a checking account is the account that you would use to get really quick access to your money. And Anne told you it's the one that you would use for everyday kinds of things. A savings account is the money that you put money away and you don't use it for a little bit of time. You, you use it for money that you would want in the future. So you can do the same things where you can deposit money in and take money out, but generally you, once you put it in, you wanna kind of save it up for something. And that's why we call it a savings account. So go to um, 11, please. And when we go to 11, we talk about how to deposit money in 
And it's really pretty much the same ways that we talked about the, for the checking account. And we can take money out the same way for cash or electronically, transferring money between the accounts. So you can move money um, when you have a bank account um, that the two bank accounts, the savings and the checking are in the same place in the same bank. You can transfer money internally within the bank. And then also you can withdraw money out the same way that we talked about before in person by ATM or electronically, but you cannot write checks or use a debit card on your savings account. And we're going to talk a little bit more about savings account later, but those are the kinds of things where you would want to save up for something else. If you wanted to save up for, you know, Christmas time when you were going to be giving gifts or for a car or for your um, buying a house, those are good places to start saving money and putting that aside that you're not using all the time. So now we're going to go to slide 12 and Anne's going to take over again. All right, so slide 12 is headed up chapter two, banking. So um, the part of the presentation that we've just finished gave you sort of the basics. And now we're going to go into a little bit more detail with some extra information about the checking and savings account, how to use your checking account, how to write out a check. So um, you may not be doing this as much as people used to write checks. But still in all, you may write out some checks. So we'll be showing you um, a little bit about how to fill in a check and how to use other banking options and how to pay for things. What is the best way to pay for certain kinds of purchases? So let's go on to slide 13, please. All right, this one is headed up. Checking account information. So um, an important thing to note is that there can sometimes be a time delay for some of your deposits and withdrawals. So when money goes from one bank to another bank, say from um, your bank to somebody else's bank to pay a bill, maybe that company's bank, the banks have to sort of talk to each other. So sometimes there may be a little bit of a delay in the bank's talking to each other. Um, sometimes things are instantaneous, like when you use your debit card, that comes out of your bank immediately. But if you're um, sending money to another bank, sometimes things can take a little bit of time. So just be aware that there can be a time delay. There isn't always, but sometimes there can be, both for deposits, money going in, and for money going out of your account. On a checking account, the bank doesn't usually pay you interest. Um, it does on a savings account. It's not much these days, but on a checking account, you usually will not be paid interest, okay? Oftentimes, the bank does require a minimum balance to be held on your checking account. So what is a minimum balance? This means the least amount of money or the smallest amount of money that the bank tells you that you must have in your bank account. Why? In order to avoid fees. Okay, so sometimes the bank will say, okay, um, we're not going to charge you for banking. You know, there's, there's not going to be a regular monthly fee for you banking, as long as in your checking account, you have at least, and it might be as little as $25, it might be $100, it depends on the bank, but as long as you keep a certain small amount of money, relatively small amount of money in your bank at all times. So that would mean if the minimum balance amount is $25, you must at all times always keep $25 in your bank account, in your checking account. Otherwise, you will be charged a fee. Okay? Is everybody clear on that? Uh, not all banks require this. But if the bank does require it, you have to keep an eye on that and be very important that you don't let your balance go below that $25 or that $100 or whatever it is, okay? 
important to avoid fees, and we'll talk more about that later. Um, again, as I mentioned before, always be aware of what fees might be applied to your account. Okay, this is really important because these fees, some of them are very small, but they can really start adding up. So if you go into an overdraft situation, there will be a fee. Now, not all banks let you go into an overdraft situation. And an overdraft simply means that you have taken out more money from your checking account than you actually had in there. Okay, so if I have $5 left in my checking account, like I haven't done a good job this month, I only have $5 left, but then I go into Starbucks and I spend $8, right? If I try and take that $8 out, that means I'm, I only had $5 in there. Now my balance is going to be minus $3 if the bank via my debit card lets me do that. Okay, so now I have a minus balance. The bank is not going to be happy with that and the bank is going to charge me a fee. Okay, so again, not all banks will let you do that. They may, they, it may come up when you put in your debit card, no, 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 you don't have the money and it, that purchase may be refused. Um, but if the purchase is accepted and you go into a negative balance, it will cost you a fee. Okay, so be very, very clear that you keep track of your money. You do not spend more money than you have and that you know if there's going to be a fee, how much it will cost you. Okay. Um, again, if you don't keep at your minimum balance, there will be a fee. And again, as I mentioned before, if you use another bank's ATM, there may be a fee from that bank. And typically it's about $253. But it may also be that your bank charges you a fee as well because now they have to process an ATM um, item from a different bank. So they may charge you a fee as well. So typically it will cost you 2 or $3 from each bank. That's an extra, you know, five or six dollars that you didn't need to spend. OK, so be very, very careful about using other banks, ATMs. Sometimes if you go into other places, like, for example, um, I know uh, in our local 7-Eleven, there's an ATM machine and it does not charge fees no matter what bank you bank with. So, you know, again, this varies from place to place. But in general, be aware that there may well be fees charged if you don't use your own bank's ATM. All right, so if we go on to the next slide, this should be slide number 14. And this is headed up savings account information. Okay, so this is all about what you can do on your savings account. Again, there can be this time delay, which I just mentioned before. The bank does usually pay you interest. Um, these days, unfortunately, it's usually a very tiny amount of interest. It might be just a couple of dollars a month. Uh, but still, in all, it's, you know, it's money coming to you, which is never a bad thing. Um, there may also be a minimum balance required on your checking account, on your savings account, as well as on your checking account. So, again, just be aware of that. And usually, there can be fees for your savings account. But usually the fees for this are small. Um, and let's remember that you're trying to use the savings account to actually build up some savings. So in general, you should never, ever, ever be going into, you know, an overdraft position on your savings account. You should just be accumulating money, putting money in regularly into your savings account to build up that savings for that goal that you might have, like Deb said. Um, so you probably won't be getting fees on that account. But again, be aware of the rules and make sure that you don't do anything that might get you fees. All right. So with that, I'll turn it back to Deb. Okay. So, so let's go back uh, to using your checking account on slide 15. So is everybody with me on slide 15? We're going to talk about using your checking account. We talked about these very, very briefly, and now we're going to talk in more detail about using a check and a debit card and electronic payments. So we're going to go straight to 16. A check is a paper payment from your account, and we're going to talk about writing it 
in another slide here, you write it to a person or a business. And most places will take a check if you also have an ID. So you could go into a giant or a Safeway and write a check if you have a driver's license or some other ID that you can show them that it is really you. And they do that so that if somebody steals your account or your checkbook, that they can't just be writing checks and uh, getting money out of your account. Debit cards. Now I talked a little bit about a debit card. A debit card is a plastic card. It looks like a credit card, but it's not. It works differently. And Anne told you this too. It's an immediate electronic payment from your account. So if you put your Starbucks coffee, the example that she gave you, on your debit card, right away, Starbucks gets the money out of your account by you're using the debit card. So you can swipe it in person or you can also do it remote online. So if you were paying for things online on the internet, you would put the number of your card into it and you would not have to physically hand over the card. So either way, and most places will take debit cards. So you could use a debit card at the grocery store. You could use it at the gas station. You could pay your bills with it online. You can do most anything with a debit card. There are also electronic payments. And the electronic payments, and we'll talk about this a little bit more, can be links to your utilities, you know, to Pepco or to your telephone provider or to the water company. It could be to your, um, to your uh, landlord if you're paying rent. It could be to your bank or to a different bank. If you're paying a mortgage to a lender that is not the bank where you have your accounts. And then also, if you use PayPal or Venmo or Zelle or Apple Pay or any of those apps that are electronic payments, they need to know what your bank account number is so that when you're paying using those apps, that it's going to be connected to the bank account and that whoever's on the other end is actually going to get the money. So now I'm going to go to slide number 17 and we're going to just, we're not going to spend a lot of time because as Ann said, we don't often write checks anymore, but every once in a while you need to. And they come in a book from your bank and then you have to fill in all the information. So if you look at this example, this is Sonia's check. You can see that it's going to have her name and her address. It's going to have a check number. She's going to fill in a date. She's going to say who she paid it to. So the date on this one is May 1st in 2020. So you can tell this is this presentation is a little old now. And she's going to pay it to Pepco and she's going to pay $50.75. Well, how do we know that? Because in two different places, she has to write that out differently. So she has to write it in words and then she has to write it in numbers. And then there's going to be the name of the bank and the account, the account that she's writing for 1234 is her Pepco account, not her bank account. Her bank account is going to be on the bottom and then she signs it. So if you go to the next slide to slide 18, we're going to talk about those parts of the check again. So some of this will be pre-printed from your bank. They will send you checks that have your name and address already on it, and it will have your bank's name on it. So my check has my name, Deb Pomerantz up at the top. It has my address, and it has my bank at the bottom, that's SunTrust. But it has, and it has those numbers up at the top, the check numbers. And then I have to fill in some information. 
So the things I have to fill in are just like we looked at Sonia's check. I have to fill in the date that I'm writing the check. I have to say who I'm paying. So in the example, it was Pepco, but it could also, I could write a check to Anne. I could, I could write that out to her and give her money. And then I'm going to put in the dollars in numbers and I'm going to write out the amount in words. And then at the bottom where it says memo, I can say what it was for. So remember for Pepco, I could put an account, but if I'm paying it to Anne and I'm giving her money because she bought a gift for somebody at the office and this was what I was giving her money for was for everybody else to chip in, I could put, it was Barb's birthday gift. Okay, or Raul's party. And then at the very bottom, I'm going to sign on the right-hand side, but there's all these numbers that are out at the bottom. And those are very, very important numbers. And you're going to need them whether you're writing a check or whether you're doing things electronically. There's the routing number. The routing numbers tells it what the bank is. So that's the thing that we have marked in red. And for my bank, for SunTrust Bank, there's a number that when I put that into anywhere else on the internet, it automatically reads that number and says, oh, that's SunTrust Bank. So that's what we call the routing number. And then you see the next thing in, that we marked in green is the account number, and that's your account. So I have an account that's just mine, my checking account, and that's the account number. And that number goes with my bank. So you're going to need both of those things to do anything electronically. If you're writing the check, it's already out on the check. They already pre-print it. And then the last thing is that check number. And so see that 1035 matches the 1035 at the top. And when you're keeping track of your checks, you will say, okay, check 1035, I wrote to Ann. And I know that. Okay, that's a lot of information. Does anybody want to ask some questions? Or do you want to raise your hand in the chat box? No? Okay, well then we'll keep going. I'm going to give it back to Ann. All right, so now we're at slide 19. And the heading on this slide is how to use banking options, paying for items. So this is just a quick run through of how it might be best to make particular purchases to pay for, for particular items. So I think as we said before, cash, it's quick, it's easy, you have it in your pocket. It's best for small purchases, okay? You don't want to be hauling around, you know, hundreds of dollars to pay for something. Um, it's just not wise these days to carry a lot of money around with you. So, you know, for, for that $5, 10 purchase here or there, cash is great. It's, you know, it's no fuss. Um, but bigger purchases, really not so much. Checks, if people still care to use them, are very good as Deb just said, for payments to people or businesses. And if you're going to mail something, then you really pretty much have to use um, a check. That's the only thing that you can mail. You can't mail your debit card. You certainly should never mail cash, okay? So if you wanna put something in the mail, uh, that's going to be a check. Debit cards are probably the way to go for many, many things. Okay, even actually small purchases, you know, I prefer to pay cash for my small purchases, but you can certainly use a debit card for small purchases too. But it's really, really good for just your everyday purchases. So for example, when you go to the supermarket, you know, they always have the little machine there. You just put your debit card in the machine. The money, as we both said, comes straight out of your account and you'll get a receipt. Very easy, very quick. You just have to make sure, obviously, 
that you have enough money in your account. Um, it's also really good for online purchases. Online purchases can usually be done with a debit card or a credit card. And the difference being debit card comes out straight away, credit card, it's processed straight away, but it doesn't come out of your bank account until you get the bill from the credit card company and pay that bill. Okay, so either way is very easy, but a debit card is certainly very, very easy and quick to pay for your online purchases. Now, you can also make different kinds of electronic payments. These are really good for things like recurring payments. So maybe your rent, maybe your utility bills, the kinds of things that um, Deb just mentioned. Um, these recurring payments, so you can also set them up to be an automatic electronic payment or you can just pay them every month electronically. So if you choose to set up something with the bank, it means that you're going to tell the bank and you're going to tell, let's say, Pepco, your ele electricity provider, you're going to tell your bank and Pepco, so Pepco's bank, that you want to pay your utility bill every month on a certain day, let's say the third of the month, every month, I want you, the bank, to please just go ahead and pay my PEPCO bill, okay? So PEPCO will send you a notification of how much your bill is. That also notifies your bank, and the bank will pay your bill automatically every month. Okay, the thing with doing that is that you have to remember that that money came out of your bank account automatically on, let's say, the third of the month, all right? So you just have to remember that by the fourth of the month, that money will have been taken out of your account. Okay, so don't think that you've got more money than you have because that payment will have been made because it's done automatically. Or you can make an electronic payment by just doing that yourself with your bank and the Pepco bill and their bank every month. Okay, so that does not come out automatically. You have to do that yourself and make an arrangement for that every time that you get a bill, okay? So those electronic payments are quick, they're easy. Um, sometimes you can do it over the phone. You can call your electric company and say, hey, I'd like to make an electronic payment and here's the various numbers that you need, my bank account number, maybe my routing number, which is um, you can find on your checks or you can ask the bank, as, as Deb just showed you where it was on your check. So you can give that information over the phone. Sometimes doing that, there might be a fee involved. So you certainly have to inquire if there's going to be a fee. Okay, but you do have those options of um, banking electronically, either setting up as an automatic payment every month or doing it yourself electronically every month. All right, so now if we go on to the next slide, this should be your slide 20 and it's headed up Review of Banking Chapters 1 and 2. So essentially, this is um, now sort of the end of our presentation. And I'll just go over a quick review of what we actually covered today. And then um, I'll stop after the next slide and we'll ask at the end for questions. So today in Chapter 1, we suggested that you ask yourselves why you need a bank account. And usually there are many reasons you do need a bank account. Um, how then, once you've decided you need a bank account, would you go about choosing a bank? And if you remember, you want it to be convenient, you want to look at the fees. There. Um, and you want to remember there are two main types of account. These are called checking account, which is your everyday account. That's usually the account that you open first. And then once you get in the habit of using a checking account, and you understand banking, then you might want to open a savings account, which is essentially going to be an account where you put money to accomplish financial goals. So that's short-term goals or long-term goals, but essentially you're going to be saving for something. It might be, as Deb said, for Christmas presents, you know, save up money to buy a car, 
or it might be a longer term save up money for college for your child. Okay, that might take a bit longer. But those are the two main types of accounts. And then we also talked in chapter two, um, some more general information about checkings accounts and savings accounts, how you use them, you know, what are some things to remember about using them so that you manage them well. Um, Deb showed you what a check was and how to write out a check, should you be using those. Um, how to use various banking options, like what are good ways to pay for things. Um, and then next week in chapter three, so this will be next week, same time, 11.30 again on Shindig ne next Wednesday. We will tell you what you will need to take with you and what you will need by way of information when you're actually doing that thing we suggest in opening your checking account. Very importantly, we're going to talk to you next week about managing your accounts. Okay, this is maybe the most important thing we'll be telling you about is how to avoid fees, how to bank and be successful in um, using your account for your everyday needs, banking needs, but also very importantly, how to start putting together some savings and how to manage those savings. And then we're going to talk to you about how to reconcile your account. What does that mean? That's um, how to make sure that what the bank says on the bank statement has happened in your account that month agrees with what you think happened in your account that month. Okay, that's a very important tool for you to be reconciling what you think happened with what the bank says happened. Um, and we'll talk a lot about that next week. And finally, next week, again, we're going to be talking quite a bit about savings, setting goals, how to set goals, and how to accomplish those financial goals, whether they're long-term or short-term goals. Okay, so quite a bit to look forward to next week, and we hope you'll, join us, you'll, join, you'll be joining us then. So um, on to the very last slide, which is slide 21. So we does have anyone have any questions or comments? We have, we have a um, question. Let me put them in the chat. Yeah, we have okay. a question about checks. And does a check expire if you don't exchange it for cash within the valid period? So the an that's a really good question. The answer is yes, that there are a lot of places where if you do not cash that check, within a certain number of months, usually you have a couple of months, um, then the bank, if you try to cash that check after that, they will refuse it. They will say it's too old. And so if that happens, then you're going to have to ask whoever gave you that check to give you a new check. So if you get a check from someone or from a business, you wanna make sure that you get it to your bank right away. And the two things that you can do with a check when you get that is you can deposit it, you can put it into the account, into your checking or savings account, or you can cash it, which means you hand them the check and then they give you cash money back. That was a really good question from Marissa. Thank you. Mm. Other questions? Okay, so next week we're going to have a question. We have a question. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, must we open both bank both accounts at the same time? No, no absolutely not. Um, and in fact, uh, you should talk to the bank that you choose about what your options are. Um, you you absolutely do not have to open more than just your checking account to begin with. Um, or I, I think there's no reason you couldn't just start with a savings account if you just wanted to do savings. But as we mentioned, usually the checking account is what you start with because it is your everyday use account. And you can certainly start with a checking account, see how your money goes, right? See if you can manage money, see if you think that you are going to be able to have some savings because no point in having a savings account if you have nothing in it, right? 
um, and you might even be charged a fee for that. So you want to be sure that you are able to manage things well and that you um, think that you will be able to put some savings into your savings account and leave them there for a little while. Um, otherwise, you certainly might just want to start with the checking account, but also talk to your bank. So sometimes bank have, um, bank, different banks have different um, special offers mm -hmm. for you or deals. So they might say, look, if you open a checking account and a savings account, we will give you $25 to put in your savings account um, and that will get you started. Mm -hmm. So, you know, because we're encouraging you to open that other account. So again, it's absolutely not required, but find out what the bank thinks if there's any special reason that it might be good for you to open both at the same time. But otherwise, you know, maybe just start with that checking account and see how it goes for a few months because it's all about um, getting yourself organized and making sure that you can manage money well before you start, you know, doing too many things at once. Does that answer your question? Yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you for that question. That was a great question. Anybody else? None at the moment. Um, okay, so great. We, so we turn it back to Tremaine. Wonderful workshop. I hope everyone was able to take something away from the presentation. And, and it is excited about coming back next week for part two of this, where they will share a wealth of information. Well, here's another question. There's a question. Uh, the question is savings account. Do you pay taxes to the IRS with a savings account? If you earn interest, remember, uh, Anne, so Anne, the, said, Anne said that you might get a little bit of interest. If you earn interest, then that is income that the IRS will want to tax. But usually it's not a whole lot of money and usually it doesn't have much impact. And, and you were going to say something else? Uh, so I was just going to say, I also believe that there is a minimum amount. So I think, for instance, if you only get t something like, let's say, $10 for the whole year in interest, I think the bank uh, will not report it to the IRS because it's just too small of an amount for them to worry about. So if the, if, um, the bank does report it, um, which means that you will have to pay, you will have to include it on your tax return and you will have to pay a little bit of tax on it, um, then they will send you in the mail a form that is called a 1099, a 1099. And that will say on it, uh, we have reported to the IRS that you earned this much in interest this year. Um, but again, I know that there is a minimum amount. Um, so if you only earn a few dollars and you don't get a 1099, then that means it wasn't reported because it's too tiny of an amount. You know, it, it's it's really not worth the bank bothering telling the IRS that they gave you $10 because the tax you'd have to pay on that is just about nothing. So, um, yes, they should report it. But if you don't get a 1099 because it was a very small amount of money, then it means that they didn't report it and you won't have to pay taxes on it. But again, that only saves you about a couple of dollars anyway. Okay, we have another okay. Question. Your question, Jose. The other question is, I'm wondering about using PayPal or Venmo. Is it safe? So I think there's going to be a whole presentation on using electronic money. And generally, some of the really big companies are safe. But there's also a lot of little companies that you should be a little bit more careful about. Okay. Are there any more questions? We still have some more time. <laughs> <laughs> Good. 
These are very good questions. They're a really good question. Good question. And I have a question. They, they were yeah. asking about, I they think mentioned PayPal and, and Venmo, but what about Cash App? Should they be leery of Cash App? I'm not familiar with that one. Ooh. I can't answer that. So I think um, the... the I, I think a good thing is for people to come back. So there will be a third presentation this month. Mm. Um, so this week and next Wednesday is basic banking. The Wednesday after that, I believe Denise will be presenting um, all about the um, cash-based apps. So perhaps it would be good to save the question till then and, and um, you know, ask Denise because she really is more of an expert than we are on those apps. Okay, so hold those questions regarding electronic banking <laughs> related to <laughs> PayPal, Venmo, and Cash App. Hold it, hold it, write it down, put it in your think tank someplace where you could store it and have it in a safe place and don't forget it because I know if I have to wait that long, I am going to absolutely forget my question. But come back. That that helps you to come back to the workshop and, and get this wealth of information that we're presenting. Look, I know that you can tell that we're all excited um, about this information that we're presenting presenting to you because we want you to be able to go into the community and really be able to do what's best for you and your family by understanding all of these all of this information as it relates to banking. So next week we have part two of the same workshop, same time, same place. Look for the link. My information is in the chat, Tremaine, T-R-A-M-A-I-N-E at lcmcmd.org should you have additional questions or need additional assistance. Um, feel free to shoot me an email at any time. We thank you so much for joining us and we look forward to seeing you next week. Have a happy Wednesday. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks for coming. Oh, we have a hand raise. Yun Yun Duk Cho. Oh, good luck. This guy. <laughs> You're welcome, Nat and Talia. You're welcome, Fatima. You're welcome, Maria. You're welcome, Ming Wong. Yes. You know, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right, Jeremiah. Hello. Can we remove, um, can we shut the classroom down or remove participants at the end of workshops? I was clicking around trying to see we still have one left. Um, mm -hmm.